contrary to what it may sound like, short circuit evaluation has nothing to do with an electrical component going haywire due to faulty wiring or accidental grounding. It is a situation many modern programming languages account for when a two-part Boolean expression in a program using the AND or OR conjunction operator is evaluated, and only the first part of the expression needs to be considered, completely skipping the second part. Think about it. For the AND operator to be true, what must be the case? Well, both parts of the expression must be true. If either is false, the entire expression is false. Let's look at the four possibilities for AND. True and true is true. That's easy. False and false is also easy. The result is false. True and false is false because the second part is false. False and true is false because the first part is false. Now, which of these four combinations will short circuit in the evaluation process? Well, if you think about it, if you see that the first part is true, you must still look at the second part to see if it is also true. If the second part is true, then you have a true result. But if it is false, you have false. These two situations are not examples of the short circuit process. When the first part is true, the second part must be examined to get a final result. Now, look at the second and fourth expressions. What is the state of the first part for both of these? They are false, which makes the entire expression false. There is no need to look at the second part. It would be a waste of processing power and time since there is already a result. Make sense? This is what short circuit evaluation is, skipping the second part, because you already have the result by looking at the first part. Okay, that's kind of cool. When would this be beneficial? Let's look at one example of when short circuit evaluation proves helpful in a code sequence. Suppose you have a program that includes a step to check if a division operation meets a certain criterion, perhaps making sure that the result of the division operation is greater than or equal to 1, for example. If that situation is true, the program does one thing, and if not, another. The first step is to input two numeric values. Let's call them num1 and num2. The program needs to verify that num1 divided by num2 will have a result of 1 or greater. The simple version of the if statement would be like this. If num1 divided by num2 is greater than or equal to 1, do something else. Do something else. Looks okay, right? It is okay as long as you have values that will work, like 10 and 5, which would result in a value of 2 for the division operation. But what if num2 was 0? Would this still work? No. The problem with this is when the input value for num2 is 0, in which case an attempt to divide by 0 will happen, the program will blow up. Ever try to divide by 0 on a calculator? It yells at you, something like, you can't do that, dude, or just simply says, error. To prevent this from happening, a protection expression can be included in the if statement, like this, which at first glance seems to do the trick, right? If num1 divided by num2 is greater than or equal to 1 and num2 is not equal to 0, seems logical enough. Well, it doesn't work. The compile process evaluates one part at a time, in order from left to right. The problem remains, because the first part that is evaluated would still cause the division by zero error, despite the second part seemingly protecting against that problem. So what's the fix? Well, it's obvious. Put the protection statement first, like this. If num2 is not equal to zero, and num1 divided by num2 is greater than or equal to 1, and so on. This will work. Why, you ask? Because the compiler will only look at the second part of the expression if the first part is true. If the value of num2 is indeed 0, the first part will evaluate to false, causing a short circuit in the process, which is a good thing in this case. Since the first part is false, the whole expression is false 
and the division by zero operation does not even occur since the second part is never evaluated. Let's look at the OR operator now. For that situation to be true, either part of the expression can be true. The four possibilities are true or true is true, false or false is false. True or false is true because of the first part being true. False or true is true because the second part is true. Think about this for a moment. When would a compound expression using the OR conjunction operator result in a short circuit evaluation? Consider these examples for a moment and decide which ones will short circuit. Okay, if you decide that the first and third statements will short circuit, you are correct. Both of these have true in the first part, which means there is no need to look at the second part. Waste of time and processing power. Here is a simple code segment to demonstrate this. Num1 gets 10, num2 gets 5. If num1 is greater than 0 or num2 is greater than 0, do something else, do something else. Now this is not quite as dramatic an example as the AND we saw earlier, but it still shows a short circuit situation for OR. For the entire expression to be true, either part needs to be true. Since num1 has a positive value, it causes the first part of the expression to be true. And the second part need not be checked, since OR requires only one of the two parts to be true to get a true result. Now you know about short circuit evaluation.